My name is Philip Hemmer. I'm a professor from Texas A&M University, but I also have a project here in Kazan. It involves quantum-enhanced biosensing. Now, what does that mean? We've all heard about quantum computers, outperform classical computers for certain special types of problems like code making, code breaking, and quantum simulation. Okay, but what can this quantum advantage do to improve our life? Can it make us healthier? And so that's exactly the sort of things we want to answer in this mega grant. Our approach here will be to use small particles of diamonds and phosphorus. And we will use the quantum properties of these to try to see things that we can't see ordinarily. So for example, we will try to see how proteins operate. What temperature changes occur in embryos as they develop? We would like to see monitor crops as they grow and see how they respond to environmental stress. So these are all questions we'd like to answer. Our approach will be to use nanoparticles consisting of both diamonds and phosphors. And to do this, we're gonna to need to do a lot of different technologies. We need very multidisciplinary approach. All these things we need to combine. Well, let me give you an example. One thing we use a lot is a color center in diamond called the nitrogen vacancy. Essentially, we call this NV for short. It consists of two atoms, a nitrogen atom and a vacancy. A vacancy, of course, only exists in a solid. It's an absence of a carbon atom in our case. And this special molecule is what makes diamonds glow red. Okay, but not only that, if you shine a green light on it, it actually does something very interesting. It polarizes the spins of the electron in this molecule. Well, magnets are made by polarizing electron spins. And so we make a magnet with it. But it's more special than that, because in addition, we can detect a magnetic field by a process known as optically detected magnetic resonance. But what it means is that if we put a magnet next to this nitrogen vacancy molecule, it actually gets dim. Maybe only a few percent, but we can see that with our cameras and our photon counters. And so that's how we get the quantum advantage. How do we grow the diamonds? Well, you've probably heard that diamonds require high pressure, like tens of thousands of atmosphere. You typically, you need a big chamber for that. But we actually just use a couple of diamond anvils and squash a gasket of metal in between. We put them in the cell, and then we squeeze the material in between them. And we can get pressures of tens of thousands of atmosphere. Now, this allows us not only to grow the diamonds, but to watch them when they grow. So we don't have to wait to see what comes out of the pot. We can watch what happens, and we can make modifications and understand it much better. Here is our custom-built confocal microscope. We build it ourselves because we want to be able to see single molecules. This is the sample and microscope objective. Collects the light. In order to scan the laser beam, we have a, a laser scanner. This allows us to make images, and you can sometimes see the scanning over there on the, the wall. Once we pick a region of interest, we focus onto that. We then collect the light with the detectors in this box. In the box, there's a photon counter that counts individual photons. There's also a camera of the type used for astronomy. And this camera can be used to make the spectrum of a single molecule. So this is how we study the samples. This is our control center. It's where we look at the samples. So we basically scan the laser and generate an image here. We find something of interest, we focus on that, and we look with the camera. You can see a streak. This contains information of the spectrum of that molecule. On a plot, and we can actually map out the spectrum. That tells us what molecule this is, and whether it's a color center of interest or something else. So in summary, we want to use the quantum advantage for biosensing. We want to solve problems that no one knows how to solve now. And along the way, we want to find useful applications that are immediately useful, such as temperature sensing in embryos or measuring um, proteins. So that's the goal of this, of this project.